I want to explain the method of characteristics, which is a technique for solving partial differential equations like this one. So this is a first order partial differential equation. It's quasi-linear, which means that it's the form a times d5 by dx plus b times d5 by dy plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are all functions of x, y, and phi. So phi is a function of x and y, and this is an equation for phi. So, for example, here's an example. Uh, we could take a equals phi. We could take b equals sine of xy. We could take c equals x squared minus phi squared. They're perfectly good functions of x, y, and phi. And this would give us a partial differential equation like the one we're interested in. So I'm going to call this general equation star. And our strategy is to reduce this to studying a system of ordinary differential equations because we know how to solve ordinary differential equations. Well, an ordinary differential equation, or an ODE, only involves one independent variable. Uh, so let's introduce one. Let's call it T. And let's make X and y depend on t, and phi will depend on t through its dependence on x and y. Now, having done this, we can differentiate phi with respect to t. In other words, we differentiate x, uh, phi evaluated at x of t, y of t. And using the chain rule, this gives us x dot, time differentiation of x, times d5 by dx, plus y dot times d5 by dy. And this looks remarkably similar to the first two terms of equation star. That is, if we took x dot equal to a of x of t, y of t, phi, of x of t, y of t. Lots of brackets and y dot equals b of x of t, y of t, phi of x of t, y of t. Lots of brackets. Okay, so if we if we make these substitutions, then this becomes exactly a times d5 by dx plus b times d5 by dy. And then if phi is a solution of this equation star, this would be equal to minus c. That is to say minus c evaluated at the point x of t, y of t, phi of x of y, x of t and y of t. Blah, okay. In other words, if we consider the curve in three-dimensional space, x of t, y of t, and then z of t, which is equal to phi evaluated at the point x of t, y of t, This is a curve in three-dimensional space, R3. If we consider this curve, its tangent vector is just x dot, y dot, z dot, and z is, is equal to phi, right? So this is equal to, well, x dot is a, y dot is b, and z dot is d by dt of phi, which is minus c. Okay, but this here, this makes sense. Without thinking about the equation, without thinking about phi, this is just a vector field. So we define this vector field on R3. It's called the characteristic vector field. 
just write VF for vector field on R3 to be A of XYZ, so XYZ are coordinates on R3, B of XYZ, and minus C of XYZ. Okay. So at each point in space, this gives us a vector whose components are A, B, and minus C evaluated at that point, x, y, z. And what's this, what's this curve? This curve is, is called a characteristic curve. It's a so-called integral curve for the vector field. In other words, it's always tangent to this vector field, which I'll just put an arrow, this vector field here. In other words, x dot y dot z dot equals a b minus c. And what we saw with this computation up here was that if we project a characteristic curve into R2, so project just to the um, x and y and restrict phi to this curve, this characteristic projection, we get a curve, a characteristic curve which sits inside our solution surface. So it sits inside the graph of phi. And this implies that the graph of phi considered as a subset of R3, that is, it's the set Z equals phi of xy. Um, is a union of characteristic curves. A union of characteristic curves. Okay, and conversely, if, um, say, we, we take a one-parameter family, depending on some parameter s, so x of t sub s, y sub s of t, z sub s of t. If we take a one-parameter family of characteristic curves, one param fam of characteristic curves, then, well, we take their union, so we consider all points s and t going to the point x of s of t, y sub s of t, z sub s of t in R3. So this is a map from R2 to R3, so it gives us a surface. And if this surface is a graph, say it's the graph of some function phi, that, well, that means that z s of t is a function of x s of t, uh, y s of t. Then the conclusion is that this function phi solves star. solves our original PDE star. And how do we see this? Well, if we just compute dz s by dt, then because this is a characteristic curve, z dot is minus c. So the time derivative of z is minus c. This gives us minus c, which is 
by the chain rule, the it's just the expression x dot d phi by dx plus y dot d phi by dy. Just applying the chain rule to this equality here. And this is xs, remember, and ys. And because each for each s, x, s, and ys are components of a characteristic curve, that means this is a d phi by dx plus b d phi by dy, just because everywhere x dot equals a and y dot equals b. And this implies immediately that phi solves star, because if we go back and look at star, it said a times d phi by dx plus b times d phi by dy plus c equals zero, and that's that's what this equation says. So in conclusion, uh, the graph of a solution to star um, is a union of characteristic curves. And a union of characteristic curves is the graph of a solution to star, at least if it is a graph. It's always possible it could fold over itself, and that's the subject of caustics, which we deal with in the notes. Um, but at least when that union is a graph, it's the graph of a solution to the PDE we're interested in. So that's the method of characteristics.